On this episode of Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying, we're actually celebrating our 100th episode. So I'll be sharing my three favorite videos of all time. I'll give you a behind the scenes look at the making of this video series and give you a heads up on how we're changing things just a bit moving forward. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss this episode. So pause this video, go grab your cup of coffee because you are in for a treat. I'm Dr. Renee Thompson, CEO and founder of the Healthy Workforce Institute. Welcome to our 100th episode of Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying. You know, I started recording these videos, I think it was back in 2015, because really practically every single day of my life, nurses were reaching out to me asking for help dealing with bullying behavior at work. And I found that I was repeating the exact same advice over and over again. So I thought, why not just start a video series so that I can share that advice with other nurses who actually may need it. And this video series has certainly evolved over time. I mean, how many different locations have we had? It's been my office, my living room in Pittsburgh, I've recorded these videos in hotel rooms, Airbnbs, and now even in our home in Tampa, which is where we are right now. And our logos and graphics and the music has changed too, from a standard graphics that you just get online to a custom illustrated image of me, like that little cartoon character, to, to now a more branded graphic, now that we're the Healthy Workforce Institute. And boy, have we had numerous name changes. I started out this company as RT Connections, and then we changed it to Renee Thompson Speaks, and now we are the Healthy Workforce Institute. Lots of changes, but you know what? The core purpose of these videos has always been the same, to provide you with the strategies you need to address bullying and incivility at work. Oh. And one last thing, people always want to know, is there really coffee in that coffee cup? The answer is, of course there is. I've been drinking coffee since I was three years old. Of course there's coffee. Although if I have to re-record uh, some of these episodes because I mess up, sometimes that coffee level, you know, kind of goes down and you may not see it. And then, you know, of course I'm over caffeinated because I'm drinking so much coffee if I mess up. And you might not see it in there, but trust me, the coffee is always there. Okay, so let's begin. I'm going to start with my favorite video of all time. It is actually the only video where I have a guest, and that guest is my daughter, Caitlin. So she was home for Christmas one year, and I knew that you know on my list was to record a video, but honestly, I didn't know what I was gonna talk about. And then I remembered an experience that her and I had when she was struggling with a coworker and you know, I helped her through it. So I begged her to be on my show. So funny, I actually asked her about 15 minutes before we planned to record. She's like, mom, I don't wanna do this, okay? We had no script, we did not rehearse, we only did one take, and so it's not perfect but it's real. And so here you go. My all time favorite video is how to stop someone who embarrasses you. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I do. What do you say to someone who's always embarrassing you in front of other people? In this episode of Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying, we're going to talk to a very special guest who solved this problem with scripting. My name is Dr. Renee Thompson. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying. 
Welcome to my new studio too. We've moved from the office to actually my living room. So I'm considered a workplace bullying expert and I spend the majority of my time helping individuals and organizations eliminate workplace bullying. You know, I just couldn't sit back and say, well, that's just the way it is in nursing. And today I'm really excited that we have a very special guest, my daughter, Caitlin. Caitlin is here because some of you may remember that I've told her story where she was really struggling with a coworker who would embarrass her in front of everybody. And she was able to stop this behavior because of a script that she used that I recommended. So, Caitlin, welcome Thank to you. Coffee and Conversations. I just want you to tell us the story, what happened through your words. Okay. Um, well, she was actually a new coworker of mine, um, and I was excited to meet somebody new. I'm really personable and outgoing, and I like meeting new people. And so throughout the beginning of the school year, I'm a teacher. Um, I worked with her, and some things, she would make little comments. Uh, it first started with her calling me narcissistic, that she had me labeled as narcissistic. And she said it to my face in front of some coworkers. And I just kind of was like, but I think that's not a nice thing to say. Yes. So, but I didn't know, and I kind of just blew it off. I didn't know how to react. Which is common. That's what most people do when they first hear something like that. They're just like, oh, I can't believe they said that. And they just blow it off. So, mm -hmm. um, And then so throughout the school year, her and I would start to hang out after school with coworkers and friends. Um, and then she started to continuously make comments about either, um, and she had a psychology degree, so yeah. she was constantly, I guess, labeling me. So she said that I had a historian complex, which I had no idea what that was, so I had to look it up. And that <laughs> means that I think the world revolves around me and that. Mm. <laughs> but, but I know that you think that, but I don't think that. So it was just, she constantly was saying mean things to me. Um, and then calling me out in front of my friends. Like, so she was yeah. new, and I wanted her to feel a part of our group. And so with her um, kind of like cutting me down, she kept cutting me down. So anything that I would try to do, or if I was succeeding, um, she would kind of like slay me. Mm -hmm. Even like, so we were out to lunch, and she, I made a comment like, I wanted the chips. Can I have a ba the basket of chips down here? She's like, whatever Caitlin wants, Caitlin gets. And so that was, yeah. and well, my co-workers kind of were like, uh, I So knew. they started noticing it They too. started noticing yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So we started talking, and I'm like, I have to, I call my mom <laughs> all the time anyway. So I knew that you uh -huh. had something to say for it. Yeah, and she did. She would call me, and she'd say, you know, this person is doing this, and, you know, she's driving me crazy, and it's embarrassing me. Yes, mm -hmm. that was the thing. I just felt embarrassed like I didn't know how to react I didn't know what to say I knew that it was offending me or like making me feel bad yeah but I didn't want to call her out and embarrass her so what you said was it, she gave me a script and that was I'm offended by that comment and that's something easy because when somebody comes at me I don't know how to react I kind of just like mm -hmm. panic right. and then I don't know how to react in that situation so I was waiting. <laughs> Say something mean. <laughs> Say something mean or something. And she eventually did, and it was in front of my uh, group of friends. And she always did it whenever there were other people yeah. around. Um, and I turned to her and I said, "I am offended by that comment." And I turned back around, and she was like, uh, uh, "Like," and she didn't know how to respond right. to that. And then she quickly was like, "You know, I'm always joking. You know, I'm always joking." And I just kept repeating, "I'm offended by that comment." I'm offended by it. Like anything that she said <laughs> yeah. to me, because I didn't know what to say more. After that. I just knew that I had to say that. <laughs> and then she stopped, though. Like she yeah. stopped talking to me and, or like negatively and yeah. mean. Yeah. So yeah. it works. Go it mom. Did. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Um, exactly what Caitlin was going through. You know, you have somebody that you're dealing with at work who's always saying things to you and you, you know, I'm like Caitlin, I never know what to say in the moment and that's why scripting works. And so this is what I want you to think about. The next time 
your coworker or somebody that you're dealing with um, says something obnoxious or says something that embarrasses you, there's a couple of different scripts you can use. You can use the one that Caitlin used. Just look the person in the eye and say, I'm offended by that comment. And pause. That's all you need to say. Or you can say this. Here's a second script that actually works really well too. You know what? I'm not willing to respond to that comment. And then turn around and walk away. What I don't want you to do, and it's something that we commonly do, is we use silence as a strategy. We don't say anything because, and it was exactly what Caitlin said, sometimes you don't know what to say and sometimes you don't want to say anything in the moment because you don't want to embarrass that person either. You know, a lot of times we downplay these minor comments, but when you do that, they always escalate. So if you're dealing with someone who sort of, you know, is destructive or they're embarrassing you in front of other people, just think about these two scripts that you can use. When you do, the bully gains power. You know, when, when, when you just use silence as a strategy, the bully gains power. Take away their power with scripting. So I just want to thank Caitlin thank for coming to my show <laughs> and telling us her story. And this is what I want you to do. If you really like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, you can put some comments in the uh, section below. Share this video with maybe somebody else who you think is struggling with uh, these types of behaviors at work. And then don't forget to go to my website, www.rtconnections.com, um, for more resources and tips and strategies to help you eliminate workplace bullying. So until the next conversation, be kind to each other, take care, and stay connected. You know, I crack up every time I watch that video, especially when Katie says, I, I didn't know what else to say. I just knew I had to keep saying that, okay? Seriously, I crack up every time. The good news is that, you know, she worked with that coworker for another year after we recorded that video, and that coworker never said anything like that to her again. I'm telling you, scripting works. All right, next up. So I was born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I love Pittsburgh. If you could just get rid of January and February, I probably would have stayed there. But because I travel a lot, I thought, well, it doesn't really matter where I live. So my husband, Ashley, and I, we spent a week in Tampa, Florida to look for a winter home to buy. We rented an Airbnb, but realized that the week we were there, we owed our next video to our editing person who was doing our videos at the time. And I was like, oh my gosh. So last minute, Ash packed the camera and we actually recorded this video in the place where we were staying. It was actually a really nice place, but it had terrible Wi-Fi and all sorts of problems. But in this video, I share one of my absolute favorite stories about a physician who helped me to not allow anyone else to make me feel bad about myself. And you know, if you've ever taken something personally from someone who maybe really was an important person in your life, but you let it affect you, then you need to watch this. It's a game changer. Enjoy this video. How do you keep a toxic co-worker from ruining your nursing career. In this episode of Coffee and Conversations, I'm going to give you three strategies to protect yourself from that toxic co-worker. Hi, my name is Renee Thompson and I spend the majority of my time helping organizations and individuals Create a healthier workforce by eliminating and addressing workplace bullying and incivility. And in today's episode of Coffee and Conversations About Nurse Bullying, we're going to talk about how do you protect yourself from that toxic coworker who's hell bent on making you miserable at work. You know, I can remember when I was a newer nurse, there was this one older nurse who would just seem like she would do everything that she could to try to find me making a mistake, to 
find a reason to embarrass me in front of other people by criticizing me or yelling at me. Seriously, anytime I was around her, I felt this overwhelming sense of anxiety and dread. And it really did affect me for a period of time. And then I'll never forget one time she embarrassed me in front of a group of people and I was about to cry and this um, older, wiser physician pulled me aside into the hallway and he said, oh my dear, why would you ever let anyone less professional, less smart, and less kind than you ever bring you to tears? He said, you go back in there with your head held high because you are smart, you're a professional, and you're one of the kindest nurses I've met. And I'm like, okay. And then I went back in and I never let her treat me that way again. So what did I do and what can you do? All right, first of all, don't take it personally. I know that's hard to do because if you're like me, you care about what other people think of you. And I know I do and it's been a challenge in my years to just let it go. You're not gonna let every, you know, not everybody's gonna like you. But separate yourself, don't take it personally because people who are like that, people who are truly toxic, the problem is with that person, not you. So don't take it personally. Second, speak up. Time out. Not okay the way you're talking to me right now. Okay? It is not okay. Or, you know, I'm offended by that comment. Some of you have seen my other video on scripting. Okay, so speak up the next time uh, somebody says something to you that's really inappropriate. And then I'm going to tell you the best thing that you can do is, oh my God, keep your distance from them. This is classic. You're sitting there eating and this toxic person comes in and they start spewing their venom. I'm telling you, finish your meal, get up and walk away. Don't allow yourself to sit there and listen to that toxicity. Walk away from it. If that person is spewing their venom at you, look them in the eye and say, I'm not willing to respond to that. Turn around and walk away. The most important thing you can do is to keep your distance from these people because sometimes you know you have to work with them and you can't always change your schedule so that you're not working the same shift. So if you happen to be working the same shift, try to keep your distance as much as possible. So I hope those three things help you. Remember, don't take it personally. Try to separate yourself from them. That's what I did with this person. Speak up. Come up with a couple of scripts that the next time they treat you in this way, that's how you're going to respond. And then the third thing is just keep your distance, walk away from them. So I hope that helps. And you know, here's what I'd like you to do. I write an article every single week related to creating a healthy workforce. Just go to my blog. It's on my website. My website is www.renethompsonspeaks.com. Click on blog and then hit subscribe. You get this new article delivered to your email every single week. So make sure you subscribe. And thank you so much for what you're doing out there. Don't forget to be kind, take care and stay connected. You know, the physician that I referred to in that video, his name was Dr. Critchlow. He was from Mercy Hospital in Pittsburgh, and that's where I had my very first job as a new nurse. I will forever be grateful to this man. Oh, and I'm happy to say that we actually found the house in Tampa. I'm here now, and then we loved it so much. It no longer was our winter home. We sold our house in Pittsburgh, and now it's our permanent home. Okay, next video. This is the last video that I'll be sharing and it's one of my favorites because it really sums up decades of what we all know but have failed to address. Nurses eating their young, but you know, now we eat our old and everything in between. And in this video, I share three common traits bullies possess and challenge all of us to do our part to stop the cycle of nurses bullying each other, especially now. We have such important work to do and have zero time to deal with our coworkers deliberately making it harder for us. Enjoy. Do all nurse bullies look alike or are they different? Do they use different weapons to squash their targets? Or are there some common traits among most nurses who bully others? 
In this episode of Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying, I'll share three common traits present in most bullies. Hi, I'm Renee Thompson. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying. I'm a workplace bullying expert and spend the majority of my time helping individuals and organizations eliminate workplace bullying. You know, almost every day of my life, a nurse reaches out to me asking for help. And this video series gives me the opportunity to help them and help you too. You know, I've spent the last 27 years as a nurse and have witnessed bullying behavior in every single role I've held. As a new nurse working at the bedside, a home care nurse out in the community, an educator in a hospital setting, and even at the executive level, I've experienced and witnessed every type of bullying. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the three common traits that I have found most nurse bullies possess. And why is this important to you? Because knowing these traits provides you with the means to protect and bully-proof yourself against them. Over my years, I've learned three things about nurse bullying. Number one, they need targets to survive. Think about it. If everyone stood up to the bullies, they wouldn't have anyone to bully. The only way they exist are really because they have targets to pick on. Starting today, make the decision to refuse to be a target. Number two, they tend to be really good at their job. What I know about nurse bullies is that they tend to be the experts in the department. And to make things worse, they are all also more likely to get promoted. Many bullies end up in leadership roles, either charge nurse, preceptor, manager, etc. We all, leaders too, need to stop ignoring somebody's bad behavior just because they're clinically competent. And number three, they don't play by the rules. They cheat, lie, and they don't play fair. The reason why we have so many targets in healthcare is, well, because we're the do-gooders and we play by the rules. Bullies don't. Our ANA Code of Ethics provides a blueprint for clinical and professional behavior. Bullies chew up our code and they spit it out. And the key for you is to recognize and not get bamboozled by their unethical tactics. Also, make sure you don't follow suit. Always, always be a professional. Just be on the lookout for their shenanigans. You know, understand that there may always be someone at work who tries to squash someone else. Why? Well, it's because we work with humans, and humans have been treating each other poorly for centuries. But isn't it time we stop accepting bullying and nursing as the norm? We are hemorrhaging really great nurses to this problem, and we, nurses, are the solution. So if you're working with a bully, speak up, take action, do something about it, and together we can finally stop the cycle of nurse bullying once and for all. So if you need more help, check out my new website. I am now the Healthy Workforce Institute and you can find me at healthyworkforceinstitute.com and join my community of other amazing nurses who understand that the way we treat each other is just as important as the clinical care we provide. Just choose the path that makes the most sense for you. Okay, until our next conversation, be kind, take care, and stay connected. All right, you know this, right? It is time to put to rest that whole eating our young phrase once and for all. And lastly, I want to give you a heads up on a few changes to our Coffee and Conversation videos. We'll be looking for guests to hop on virtual calls with me to discuss success strategies. We'll also be bringing in other experts who will share additional tips on how to cultivate a more professional and respectful work culture. And we may need to step away from the blue chair from time to time and, you know, mix it up a bit. If you have any suggestions about what you'd like to see moving forward, please enter those suggestions into the comment box below. We love comments. And of course, if you want to join our community, and learn more about how you can address any badness in your organization, just go to our website, healthyworkforceinstitute.com, where you will find a plethora of resources to help you. 
And as we wrap up, I really want to acknowledge a few people. I mean, there's no possible way that we could bring these video episodes to you without the support of, well, a team. I first want to thank Randy Guyon, who I met on an airplane like 12 years ago, who actually put together our first website and our first series of videos. And he's still a really great friend of mine. And then, of course, Ashley, my hubby, who is recording right now. Hi, honey. <laughs> okay. Who may have sometimes forget to charge the camera battery when we're ready to go. But that's okay. I love him. Studio Me, who put together the fancy intro and outros that we have for a while, and they did a lot of our editing, but now we have Courtney, our other daughter, and Laura, our techie wizard, who now are responsible for doing all the editing and putting everything into YouTube and then sharing it with the world. Basically, I just show up and talk. They do all the work, so I wanted to thank them. And I hope the videos that I've included in this 100th episode and the other 96 six episodes I have give you the tools you need to eradicate bullying and incivility. I truly believe that together we can make healthcare a better place. Cheers to the next 100 episodes. So until our next conversation, be kind, take care, and stay connected. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying. You know, difficult patients are all... Hi, I'm Dr. Renee Thompson. I'm the CEO and founder of the Healthy Workforce Institute. And what else am I Welcome to, to Coffee and Conversations. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations. Hi, my name is Dr. Renee Thompson. As the founder of the Healthy Workforce Institute, I've been helping healthcare professionals cultivate Yeah. Oh. <laughs> if you only have five minutes and you're in a staffing crisis, are you going to spend that five minutes filling that hole or finding and posting an inspirational meme for your Healthy Workforce Bulletin Board? Hmm. <laughs> I'd be filling my hole too. And this is why it is super important to hardwire Healthy Workforce Best Practices into your department so that... <laughs> filling your hole? <laughs> so, <laughs> I was fine until I saw you laughing. You said filling your hole. <laughs> I'll say staffing hole, okay? After all, if you only have five minutes and you're in a staffing crisis, are you going to spend that five minutes filling that hole? <laughs> Fixing that crisis? I'm a workplace bullying expert and spend the majority of my time helping individuals and organizations eliminate workplace bully. Bully. Okay, sorry again. Bullying. <laughs> Cheryl had her chair, her computer, and her med cart. Everyone in the IC. I, <laughs> Keep getting that screwed up. I see you knew this. Cheryl raised her voice ever so slightly and said, I said, you're sitting in my chair and you need to get up right now. Liz replied, just give me 30 more seconds. So Liz threw a cup of water. Cheryl threw a cup of water. Ha! Ah, darn it, I was almost there. I'm the CEO and founder of the Healthy Workforce Institute and will be your primary contact throughout your deep dive. Deep. 